If our children are going to flourish and be able to have what it takes to not just survive, but thrive, we can't consider pregnancy a nine month grace period before parenting really begins. We have to understand that pregnancy, fetal development, and then the early months postpartum and breastfeeding, this is what I call nature's head start program. We often talk about pregnancy only in terms of the mother, only in terms of her experience. But we know from studies about pre-birth that babies have consciousness even before birth. From the end of the second trimester, the unborn child is a sensing, feeling, remembering, and conscious human being. That we know for a fact. It's really important to recognize uh, that the, the mother's thoughts and beliefs and attitudes are turned into chemistry that, that control the physiology of her body. And when she's carrying a child, then her thoughts and her beliefs and attitudes are not only affecting her physiology, it's also affecting the physiology of the child. We used to think that just nutrition was provided by the mother in developing a child, and the story was genes control the development, the mother just provides nutrition. We now know, of course, that there's more than just nutrition in blood. In blood is all the information about emotions and the regulatory hormones and the growth factors that control the mother's life in the world that she's living. And so basically, this information also passes into the placenta as well as the nutrition. So if the mother is happy, the fetus is happy because the same chemistry of emotions that affect the mother's system are crossing the fetus and affect the fetus. If the mother is scared or stressed, the same stress hormones cross and, and adjust the fetus. A woman's emotional state has a profound effect on the growth of her infant in her womb. If she feels good about herself, that it's a good world and she's in love and charity with her neighbor, then the great Darwinian evolutionary process says, well, it must be a pretty good world out there. We can go for our higher intelligence with this birth, with this upcoming infant and we won't have to protect ourselves as much. If the mother's stressed, the baby is getting the message that it's coming into a stressful environment, so it adapts its brain, it grows its brain to be hypervigilant and to be hyper-responsive to stress, and that's not something that's gonna give the child um, um, optimal lifelong health and well-being. The truth about brain construction is that it is relational. It is interactive. That brain will develop according to the interactions that are taking place with the environment. And who's the biggest environment? It's the mother. Fathers have their place. They contribute importantly to that environment. But where does the baby live? Inside the mother. When a mother is responding to a stressful situation, two fundamental things happen when you get into fight or flight, that uh, adrenal system. Number one, you squeeze the blood vessels in the gut. And this causes the blood to go to the arms and legs because the blood is the energy so that I can run, fight or flight. So I squeeze the blood vessels in the gut with stress hormones, pushing the blood to the arms and legs for my fight or flight behavior. It also switches the blood vessels in the brain for this reason. In a stressful situation, you don't depend on conscious reasoning and logic, which is forebrain. You depend on hindbrain reactivity and reflexes. That's the fastest response in a, in a threatening situation. So the stress hormones that cause the blood vessels in the gut to constrict also cause the blood vessels in the forebrain to constrict. And that pushes the blood to the hindbrain so that the reflexes can activate those arms and legs and, and provide for a safe response. I go, well, that's cool for the mother, but I said, what about for the developing fetus? I said, well, the hormones pass into the, into the placenta have the same effect. The significance is the forebrain is consciousness and awareness. You can reduce the intelligence of a child up to perhaps 52% by environmental stressors because of shunting the blood from the forebrain and developing a large hindbrain. This should be on every headline in every newspaper. It should be on every television program. It should be throughout the whole land. This is the biggest news we ever heard on scientific backing for it, that a mother's emotional state enters into as one of the participating causes of the shape, size, function, and characteristic of the brain in her infant in her womb. And that if she's given a safe, nurturing environment herself, her infant will be born with a totally different brain than it will otherwise. This is 
huge news. It's important to remember that when a mother is in a good state of health and happy and looking forward to having a baby, that these are the kinds of things that will put the baby into a bubble, into a really protective bubble, and short-term stresses, running after a streetcar or hearing something on the radio or television that upsets you is not going to have any effect on the baby. That's fine. When I talk about uh, stress that is uh, producing adverse reactions in the baby, uh, I'm talking about long-term stress or an acute stress uh, of some duration. If the woman can understand that everything that she's experiencing, everything, the way she's looking upon life is instructions getting downloaded to this baby. It doesn't have to be this daunting, oh my God, everything I eat. Let's look at it from the empowerment side. Wow, I have this opportunity. The beautiful privilege of being a human being is that we can bring consciousness in. We can change the nature of our experience just through the way we think about it. So if a woman would understand that during the moment of conception and, and, and all the months of gestation, she is truly, in my eyes, in a way equal to God because she's in the process of creating. She's creating a human being and she is creating the way that baby will perceive the world. So what we need to do in our culture is we need to take much better care of our pregnant women. Because if they create truly the consciousness of the next generation, imagine that if it would be done with love, safety, nurturing, healthy food, um, less stress, what the world could look like in one generation of consciously conceived children. <laughs>